Something that we've been working on in Miami for literally 15 years is cooling after spinal cord injury. Uh, and we, we have done a single center study for safety and then uh, extended the inclusion criteria. And for the last four years, we've been doing a multi-center study with Jefferson, Grady, Barrows, Maryland Shock Trauma, uh, looking at cooling for spinal cord injury compared to control. And uh, again, without getting into too much detail, we published a, num <laughs> a number of articles in this area. There's a lot of different ways of cooling. We use a transvenous catheter that uh, has a balloon at the end of it, which basically cools the blood as it rushes by. And that's a mechanism how we uh, cool people to 33 degrees for 40, uh, 48 hours uh, after uh, their injury. Uh, and it, you can do MRIs with it. You can give IV fluids with it. Uh, and it's the, 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 we use a, basically a cool guard uh, catheter. Um, and so we, you, this is like a typical patient who's been cooled. There's a three hour cooling period. We cool them for 48 hours and then we slowly rewarm them. Um, and uh, essentially this was an original study for safety on the first 14 patients. The Asia conversion rates were certainly favorable <clears throat> compared to natural history. We, like I said, we increased uh, our people who with cervical injuries to include Asia A's and B's, uh, and now even more recently C's, and have published uh, essentially um, 60 of our own patients who have been treated, and we're now up to about 60 patients who have been randomized uh, in, our, in our larger uh, prospective uh, study. So again, we continue to work on that. Uh, there are other neuroprotective strategies that people are working on, uh, including Riliazol and others. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.